there's a lot of things that are going wrong with the whole system here. And I hope people are paying attention when they see this stuff in the store. When you see the prices of meat and you see the cut of it, look at the price of chicken now. It's, it's gone way up. And the pieces and stuff are all smaller and smaller. I mean, you're, you're paying more, but they're harvesting these things too young. They're not letting them grow. And that's probably because of the whole bird flu thing and all that and what took place there. And they had to kill off millions and millions of birds. So now they're trickling it back in and they can't catch up because there's a high demand for chicken because it's still one of the cheapest ones. It's the cheapest meat that you can buy and that you can eat. So what else is taking place? As we're coming into wintertime, I want people to really sit back and think about your situation on heating your home, the prices and how they're going to go up and how much more it's going to cost you as a family to heat your home and it's ridiculous in price. I will say the cheapest one is electricity, but the problem in here is if the power goes out, what do you do? What's your backup? You know, because we hear every time there's a huge power outage in the wintertime and people start firing up, you know, their kerosene heaters, um, all these different types of things. You hear of people dying in fires, houses burning down and everything else because people do not understand and do not know how to use their emergency equipment. And they wait until it's time for the emergency to figure it out. And that's where this all comes into play. That's why I've always have said that is very important for everybody. If you have emergency preparedness equipment that you are not sure how to use, get it out, use it, figure it out because you want to do all that before the emergency gets here. So when the emergency gets here, you know what to do, what not to do. And this way here, you can stay prepared. You can stay ahead of the game. You don't want to be trying to figure this stuff out in the middle of a crisis. That is the wrong thing to do. Whether you want to consider yourself a prepper or not, common sense, I know that's a big one, common sense states that you have to make sure that you are trying your best and know how to use a product, whether it be a Coleman stove, a flashlight, you know, I mean, whatever it is, you know, it sounds kind of, you know, silly or stupid to us, but there's people out there that probably do not know how to work a regular flashlight or, you know, how to change the batteries. There's people out there that probably don't know how to use a headlamp, how to turn it on. What is all the dif dif different types of features on a headlamp? You know, you have the strobe, you have, you know, all the different brightnesses and everything else. You know, these are things that you need to know before the problem arises. And what's going to be taking place this coming winter, folks? I'm warning you now, these prices, they're going to keep these prices up. If you have propane, you're in trouble. Now, that's all I'm going to say, folks. If you heat your home with propane, you are in trouble. You might want to take a loan out now. And this is what I really suggest that people really need to be doing is looking for alternative sources for heat coming into wintertime. You need to start doing this and doing it now because you're running out of time before the winter gets here. We don't know when it's going to arrive, but I'm sure, you know, we're coming into September. Probably by October, the snow will start flying in some of these states. Depends on where you live. But it's just the fact of the matter is, do you have an alternative heat source, reliable. Now I'm talking about maybe even a wood stove. I'm talking about something along the lines of um, maybe a pellet stove or something like that. Because even if you have a pellet stove, yes, you can buy a battery bank that you can hook to it so that it'll fire if you don't have power. If you, if you have a, a battery bank yourself, you can keep that thing running all the time. If you have a wood stove, well, as long as you got wood, you got heat. But you also have to make sure that the wood is seasoned and it is dry. 
you don't really want to be burning wet wood in your wood stove. It's just not good. You know, it'll cause your chimney to start to clog up and creosote and all that kind of stuff. And next thing you know, you got a bad situation because now you're looking at a fire. So it's another one of those things where you have to make sure that you understand and you know what to do. So you want to make sure that you are trying to look now for alternative heat sources come wintertime. If something happens that you can't afford heat because with the recession that we are in with the high inflation rate, people are going to be coming down to making two choices. Do I heat my home? Or do I buy food? Hell of a choice, huh? I mean, really, think about it, folks. I'm sure there's going to be people that's got their heat to set as low as it possibly can go to try to stretch their fuel oil or their propane out as far as they can get it. Because those are the two top dollar ticket items this year. Is propane is number one. Fuel is number two. Then natural gas. You know, electricity is the cheapest. But I'm telling you, folks, you got to start coming up with a plan now. I'm warning you now. You got to prepare now. And if nothing else, what you need to be doing is putting food up now. I don't care if you think you're going to be labeled as a prepper, whatever. All right. You have to think about what you have to do for your family. This is something that people have been doing for hundreds of years. Back in the day, people used to put up food to get them through the winter. It's what they did. Everybody canned back in the day. And they had sellers. Or, you know, they had rooms or whatever they put them. And they'd put food up to get them through the wintertime. And that's what's key here. So take a little bit of piece out of history and start applying it in your life now. Because this way you can offset maybe some of the pain and anguish that you're going to have to go through this coming winter just to try to stay warm in your own home. You see what I'm saying, folks? So if you start catching sales, as we get closer to the holiday season, there's probably gonna be more sales. We don't know how this is all gonna play out this year, what kind of sales are gonna be and everything else because of the high inflation rate. So any sales are better than none. I'm sure they're not gonna be like these killer deals that we used to get just a few years ago, but anything would be a help and a blessing to all of you. Now, also, you have to really think about there are certain ways that you can maximize your money right now that you have. You can maximize it by getting apps on your phone for all your local stores. You can maximize it by looking at flyers, looking for the buy one, get ones. Those are a no-brainer. You can also maximize your money right now by making sure that you're trying to find the best deals on meat. And I would highly suggest if you are trying to put up some maybe meat for wintertime, you invest in a vacuum sealer. Because if you vacuum seal your meat and put it in your freezer, that's going to last you a year plus. Hands down. So you're going to get more out of your hard-earned money that you're spending to buy meat than you are if you don't use a vacuum sealer. If you just buy freezer bags and you throw them in there, I guarantee you within three months, they're going to be freezer burn. They're going to be no good. So spend the money, buy yourself a vacuum sealer. And this way here, you can vacuum seal your, your meats. You can vacuum seal your vegetables if you've buy it from say a farmer or whatever else you know you can vacuum seal your own vegetables and everything and they're going to last for over a year fresh fresh vegetables you're the one that's freezing them 